given the function p is equal to a third x. Now you should eventually, you should immediately um, know that this is exponential. Exponential. Okay. So, and then it says, is p increasing or decreasing? Now, a lot of learners, they'll tell me, because this is a fraction, that means it's automatically decreasing. And they'll say that it's automatically going like this. But it's not correct to say because it's a fraction. I could give you a fraction like this. I could say f of x is equal to 9 over 8. And guess what? This one is actually increasing. Why? It's because if you type this number on your calculator, you'll see that it is larger than 1. So when the number is larger than 1, then it increases. When the number is smaller than 1, then it will decrease. So if you had to go type this in your calculator, it would be like 0 0.3333333. So it's smaller than 1, so it would decrease. However, if you are in an exam and you just cannot get your mind to understand or remember, then all I want you to do is just plot three points. So you can choose, choose any x value that is negative. So let's maybe say negative three. So you'll plug negative three there. You don't have to show the examiner this part. It's only for one mark. You can just do it on a side piece of paper. Plug in, um, pl or better yet, just take a rough piece of paper with you into the exam with all the notes. Okay, I'm joking, obviously that's illegal. Um, so um, just say a third and then plug in x as minus 3. Let's plug in x as minus 3. And what that gave me was 27. Okay, so when x is negative 3, the y value is 27. So that's a really high value, okay? Then I want you to just plug in x as 0, for example. So plug in x as 0, and you're going to end up with 1. And then plug in x as 2. Because you see, I'm trying to find something here, something here, and something here, so I can get an idea of the shape. Then plug in x as 1, and you're going to get a third, which is even lower than this. That's like there. And there I can tell that this is a decreasing function. Oh, nice, Kev. Thanks. So um, it would be decreasing. But if you want to just remember this, if this number is less than 1, then it decreases. It's got nothing to do with a fraction. Because as I just told you, I can give you a fraction that is larger than 1, if I really wanted to. Um, so don't think of it as fraction, not fraction, okay? Now the next question says, determine the inverse. Remember, this doesn't mean the first derivative. First derivative doesn't have a minus one like that. It has a little thing like that. Can you remember what the inverse of a exponential graph becomes? It's a log graph, eh? Well done if you remembered that. So, but how do we, how do we convert it? Well, Let's go write down the first equation so long. Okay, now let's change this to y. Now, how have I taught you how to do inverses? First step, switch x and y around. Okay, so we just switch the x and y around. Next step, get the y value alone. Now, it's gonna be a log because we've learned that the inverse of an exponential is a log, and the inverse of a log is an exponential. Logs and exponentials, they are like family members. They, they convert between each other when you do inverses, okay? Don't forget that, log, exponential, log, exponential. So, you need to know how to get logs. So we're trying to get the y value alone, so I'm gonna say y equals, then I'm gonna say log, then this number is the base, over here, so it's gonna be the base of the log as well. So the base stays the base. And then I'm just gonna put x. And there is my answer. So the third is down here. It's down at the base and then the x is over there. And so let's just go write that in. Um, y equals to log of a third times x. Then it says write down the domain of the inverse. Okay, now what have I taught you about inverses? Remember, when you take inverse, x becomes y, y becomes x. So, domain becomes range, well done, and range would become domain. So they said, write down the domain of this graph. So that means we can go back to the original and we can find its range. Because the range of this one 
becomes the domain for this one. So let's go back to this one now. We're gonna focus our attention on this exponential. It's a basic exponential that does not have any plus or minus over here. That means the asymptote is the x-axis. If there was a plus one, then the asymptote would be over there at one. If it was a minus three, then the asymptote would be at minus three. But there's nothing over here. It doesn't mean there is no asymptote. It means the asymptote is on the x-axis. Now we said it's a decreasing, so we can just go draw it like that. And so that's what this graph looks like. So what is this graph's range? Well, range is the y values. So it would keep going down, 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 and it would get very close to zero. So the range would be that the y value must be larger than zero. So we'd say y is bigger than zero. If you prefer interval, you would say zero up to infinity. Round bracket, because it doesn't touch the zero. So now, this becomes the domain, but because it's domain, we change it to x, and we just do that. Or you could say x is bigger than zero. You see how the, the range of the one graph becomes the domain, because x's and y's switch when you go from, when you do inverse, okay? Just wanna quickly come back to this question. I just remembered that a lot of learners, what they like to do is, and you don't have to do it this way, but what they do is the following. They change this. They don't like to have this fraction of here. So what they do is they change it to three to the negative one, because three to the negative one is the same as one over three. Then they distribute the negative outside, so they end up with um, that. And then they then go do the whole switch x and y around. And then they end up with minus y equals to log three of x. And then they just put the negative on the other side and they end up with that. So this is the same as that. So you are welcome to do it that way as well. And that was for this question, okay? Um, right, so we've done this one now as well. So now we need to do this one. Write down the equation of the asymptote of P if you move P5 down. Very easy question. We know that the asymptote at the moment is on zero. We said that earlier, it's over there. So now they said write down the equation of the asymptote of P, so this graph's asymptote, if you move it down by five. So the asymptote will just move down by five. So if you have a graph where you've got an asymptote down here, then that is just y equals minus five. How do I know it's y and not x? Well, all I do is I look at the intercept and I ask myself, is that intercepting the y-axis or the x-axis? That's intercepting the y-axis. So we say y equals negative five. 